town of many trades and trends, a place where the impossible is possible, many ethnic groups living together harmoniously. Out of this melting pot comes a trend, a dance trend that is changing the music industry at a rapid rate. No one knows exactly where it began. Some say it started in Florida, others say Chicago, and the true dance locals say it started here in New York City. What is this new music trend? It's called Latin Hip Hop, and with its Latin percussions and salsa overtones, has influenced a new wave of Latinos, as well as whites and blacks, to try it and at the same time establish a name in this crazy business we call music. Well, Latin hip hop to me takes up uh, probably, I would say, 60% of the format that I play here at 40. I play for a very large uh, commercial audience, uh, live between six and 7,000 people per weekend. And then it was this radio show on Saturday night that adds about another, between a million, I think we're up to almost a million and a half audience on the radio show. I think a lot of this music really came from the Funhouse era. You know, that's where everything really came from in the beginning, you know, where it started. It was that Arthur Baker, John Roby sound, Chris Barbosa, Mark Liggett, you know, then Jelly Bean, you know, doing all that stuff. Producing all those all those producers, you know, the music they made was the first amongst the first Latin hip hop, you know. A lot of these kids out here really look forward to it, you know, as far as the club goes, you know, they they really get addicted to it, you can say, you know. They really look forward to coming out on a Saturday night and hearing that music. One thing about kids is they always want a type of music that they can identify to that their parents aren't going to like because it's theirs. And, and they love it because it's theirs. And if it's and it goes even further than that with the Latin hip hop or the Miami music because it goes into their culture also. It goes into their Latin heritage. To me, the, the Miami sound is more mid rangey and it's they're more happy songs. You know, they're more la la kind of things. You know. I would say the difference just becomes in the bottom end of the records, in the rhythm sections of the records. Melodically, I think they're the same. Uh, a lot of the, I, I feel Latin, what I call the Latin hip hop stuff is much more syncopated on the bottom end in the rhythm section, predominantly with the bass and, and the kick drum. Miami's a little more poppy than New York. In New York, the drums are bigger, you know, it's more percussive. You can just tell by the drums that they're re really clubby records. The prime economic movement for this music has been the resurgence of dance-oriented or power-hot radio formats. Independent record labels like Cutting, Fever, and New York Groove 
have been able to squeeze a marginal living out of street and DJ consumers long enough to develop distinctive sounds and reputations, but it was tough going for artist, producer, and company owner alike. Places. There are Latin people all over America. In New York, you have large concentrations of South Americans, of Puerto Ricans, and so on. In Cuba, in uh, Florida, in Miami, obviously, you have a lot of Cuban people. And I think that partially is part of the difference between what the Miami sound is and what, say, the Latin hip hop urban sound is. Um, I think that it came about because. Uh, the Latin people are very involved in, uh, in, in, mu in dance music, and I think that this, this is their outlet. This is, uh, as I said, their chance to break into pop music. You know, I read six or seven years ago that the, that the influx of uh, Hispanic Latin people into the country would dramatically affect the, every marketplace in this country, but especially the music marketplace. Uh, there's always great Latin influence in, in our pop music. The urban Latin hip hop, what I call New York Latin hip hop, uh, had a lot of influence on what happened in Miami. And I think what Miami did was mixed it more with straight ahead disco music from the 70s. And then in a case like Expose, I think they mixed in a lot more rock and roll, you know, with guitars and so on that really isn't a crossover. And I think that they've done a good job at that. On the other hand, I think that. Uh, there's some great stuff coming out of New York. I mean, I, I think that uh, that Sapphire is a great artist on Cutting. And I think that Cutting's got a lot of great stuff happening. I'm glad it turned out to be Latin hip hop, at least for this era right now, because it was getting pretty pretty wild with with the rap hip hop scene. They were dressing, they were all dressing the same. They all had the same haircut. They all, you know. The sneakers, this and that. Latin hip hop is a little more, you know, casual, freestyle. Do what you want, wear what you want, feel the way you want to feel, do what you want to do. Just don't, you know, harm anybody doing it. The hip hop music, which started, I think, when people stopped using live musicians and started using mach machines, the dance music became hip hop, and I think it led to break dancing and so on. And and that ultimately led to other forms of dance music using machines and, and so on and so forth. I think that there's a good chance that uh, live musicians will come back before too long. dance single of the year, 1987, called Fascinated. Uh, they were picked up by Atlantic Records. Uh, the song stayed at number one on the dance charts for four weeks and actually became a top 20 single pop. Truer to the Latin roots it helped the record uh, around the country, which you, you know it's, it's interesting to me. It, the popular version, you know, was a huge success in Miami. Yet the the, the more Latin influenced version was what turned people on around the country. <laughs> When we produce a song, it's to make people dance. When I listen to a song, it, it has to be very energetic, it has to move, and it has to have some kind of feel to it. Like sometimes we'll, we'll put some sad strings down, it makes, it, it, it makes you chill, sometimes it makes you want to cry, it makes you want to dance, you know. Mo mostly dancing, though, because everything we do is, is dance music. Latin hip hop is to me, is me, you know. I make that music, that's what comes out of me when I try to do music. And that's, you know, that's just the way it comes out. If, if there's any definition for it, it just happens to be the sort of, the sort of person that I am and the sort of person that Albert is and the sort of people that make these kind of records. We all have a lot of 
different things in common, such as background and, and taste and so on and so forth. And it just ultimately just brings out similarities between all of us. We go to a discotheque, let's say, for instance, to the Louis Vegas Club, Heartthrob. And we go in there, we stand around, and we watch all the kids dancing all the records. And all of a sudden, one of our records come on. And you see these kids storm into the dance floor. That means that, you know, it, it has to affect them in some way. But Right, right. To dance, that's what our Latin hip-hop stuff is really for. Club, dance, and hopefully, you know, on the radio, sometimes it crosses over, like I said. <laughs> Our music is very spontaneous. It's like we don't go into studios pre, you know, with all these ideas and I head ready to do it and stuff like that, like a lot of professional people do. And if you call it unprofessional the way we do things, then you might as well. But it doesn't matter because as long as our records come out being hits, that's what's important. You know, for us, it's just a very, it's Latin hip hop is, for us, it's so casual because you go in there and in five seconds you lay down a beat. Next thing you know, you think of a bass line. Everything comes in so. So grooving, you know what I mean? And to me, I just do music, you know, I just go into the studio. I, you know, I get the, we get the drums together, we'll, you know, we'll get the beat, whatever, and Whatever people describe it out there, you know, that's what they describe it. But to me, I just go into the studio and do music. I really don't have a description for it. I go into the studio and I think about Barbara Streisand, uh, Whitney Houston. I'll think about other artists before, you know, anything else, you know. I'll think about Bon Jovi, Billy Idol. <laughs> and they have nothing to do with them, you know, Latin hip hop so music. I just blend it in together, you know, whatever. I'll probably go look at Ruben Blades in concert and get his music together, you know, stuff like that. And teens get into it more than adults, you know. They like to, like, go crazy. Adults are more, you know, calm, you know. But teens, they go crazy for you. They, they really scream when they want to. They don't hide it, you know. Some of my songs have percussion, which is Latin, and I guess the hip hop, like you said, is from the breaking. I guess that's how they call it, Latin hip hop. To me, I just call it a regular dance record. Sales of between 50,000 and 150,000 12 inches on our first release are not unusual for groups like Noel, Brenda K. Star, Company B, Sapphire, Giggles, and others because a strong club buzz stirred sales and then heavy airplay followed. Anything that's money, they're going to look at whether it's Latin hip hop or house, because it's, it's what's fresh, it's what's new. And you always gotta be fresh, you can't be stale. You, know, you can't play the same old music, you have to find something different, and this is what's different. And the good thing about Latin hip hop now is that it's changing also. They're giving more intelligent lyrics to the songs. They're having people that can sing, sing the songs now. And that's, that it's changing, it's becoming a, a market. And people wanna jump on it and, and enjoy this good music. Being a Hispanic myself, I think, I think it's great. I think we've been, uh, uh, the industry has been missing that for a long, long time. Uh, it's been around for the longest. Salsa music has been around for the longest. There just hasn't been that awareness uh, towards Latin uh, uh, hip hop music. Um, I think it's becoming increasingly popular because of the notoriety of Latin producers, artists, and writers. As they become more popular, so does the music. Ten people will put out a record. Only one or two are really going to do it. Not even. The, the ratio is even, it's tr 30 times bigger than that. 150 people will put out a record. One record will be a moderate success. 500 people put out a record. One record will be a smash. The addition of Hot 103 right now, uh, the radio stations have, have, all the radio stations such as the, the top 40 radio stations, Z100 and PLJ are looking at that uh, the 12 inch market um, is a market where bucks are to be made. So um, they're all crossing over, slowly but surely they are crossing over. It's a trend, it's always a trend, but look at, I'm going to give you another example, Shannon again. 
that was how many years ago? Four years ago? Five years ago? Um, a lot of the records sound like that, and that sound is still around. Back then it was a trend, but it has progressed to something else. Everything always starts. Look at R&B was a trend, and now it's progressed to other kinds of things. Now you've got R&B records that are easy listening, R&B records that are dance music, R&B records that are just plain mellow funk. It just, oh, if it's a good trend, it'll, oh, it'll stay and it'll progress to something better. Pump up the volume, pump up the volume, pump up the volume, dance, dance. Most hip hop people, you know, they like, they're black, you know, and they like that kind of music. Most of the people that like, you know, freestyle, they're Puerto Rican, you know, some of them are white, you know. But I, I think it does separate, you know, different styles and different peoples and th their aspect of seeing that kind of music. Guys, when they used to do break dancing, they used to do it for the fun of it. So it wasn't really just for gangs, you know, because some girls used to do it too. Just the way we do uh, hip hop or freestyle or whatever, the, the, the way we dance is, um, it's just a feeling that comes out of you. Yeah. It's not that you create it, it's created inside of you. This self-creativeness is what keeps these young hip hoppers alive. National figures predict that Hispanics could form over 15% of the American population by the year 2000. For young Latins, the role models are changing. They want to impose their own cultural identity on the country, yet aspire to the success of mainstream stars like Michael Jackson and Madonna. In Los Angeles, Miami, Houston, and New York City, the latter impact is assuming an importance that is no longer possible to ignore. In the ever-changing dance market, Latin disco is the latest music to fill the dance floors. For young Cubans in Florida, the Mexicans in Texas and California, or the Puerto Ricans and Dominicans in New York, music industry.